Hey there, class. This is Professor Romanov here learning in the country of quarantine on the river virus. We will even visit some lakes and ponds. We are here learning some spooky facts, sharing scary stories with our good friend, Ranger Rene. Now, Ranger Rene, I have heard of a creature, a creature so fearsome. This creature is a descendant of terrible lizard, the descendant of dinosaurs. I have heard that it is evil and mashing. It it can fly through the air, or at least some of them can. And 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 its babies are born in hard protective Professor. shells. Professor, are you talking about bird? No, don't say that word. This is a very scary word. Don't say that word. What is what is bird? What 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 is a bird? Professor, birds aren't very scary at all. They're, hmm. They're an animal that, huh. You know, well, what do they look like? Spit it out. They're really all so incredibly different that I couldn't possibly begin to tell you what they look like without showing you. Wait, there's different kinds? Oh my gosh. Oh, so many different kinds. It, I'm just gonna have to show you. Okay, I will follow you to keep me safe. I'm scared. Let's go, Professor. Okay, it's very bright outside today. Oh, I'm so scared. Professor, I think I saw some birds over here earlier today. A bunch of different varieties that wouldn't normally gather all together. We're just hanging out. Let's go. Okay. We will travel to a scary place. I will cry and I'll see. Oh, oh what are you doing? Research here? I am. I was actually researching a whole bunch of different birds earlier today. Like I said, not where they would normally <laughs> gather. Excellent. Now, take a look at all of these different birds that I have here. Each one is perfectly adapted for the life that it lives. For example, this macaw right here, they're typically found in the rainforests of the Amazon. They need really, really strong, sharp beaks in order to crack open nuts and eat the good stuff on the inside. When you say nuts, do you mean the minds of crazy Russian professors from University of Moscow? No. Oh. Not usually. Okay. Probably not. Probably? Maybe just don't go near macaws. Okay. Now you can even see this bird right here. This is a vulture. Vultures don't have any feathers around their neck because when they find things that ha that are no longer alive, they reach inside and they need to be able to get, a get all the insides out without getting the mess all over their feathers. So you're saying they rip out those things' guts? Yes, to put it. To put it that way, yeah. Does it look like this? Mm, yeah, exactly like that, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, all right, what's the next bird? Now this bird is one that we might be a little more familiar with here in the Caribbean. That is a Caribbean flamingo. Now the Caribbean flamingo pictured here is standing on one leg. Now, maybe when you're standing around, you shift from one leg to the other without really thinking about it. You probably don't pull your leg all the way up like the flamingo does, but the flamingo, in order to conserve energy, stands on one leg at a time. It rests its other leg up underneath his feathers, and then when, that up, when the first leg gets tired, boom, it switches. <sighs> Ranger Rene, all of these birds are so different. I see many different colors, and this guy has a huge tail, and some have big, long legs, but they all have wings. Is that true? Yes. Absolutely. Oh. So, if it has wings, like this creature that I have found here, it's a bird, right? Well, not exactly. What do you mean it has wings? Look at it. It sure does have wings, but there's a few different types of animals that have wings and aren't necessarily birds. This bat, for example, is a mammal. It has wings, but it's not a bird. It has fur instead of feathers. But I learned that birds or mammals have four limbs. I only count two feet. Where are his other... Oh, okay. You've shown me so many ways that birds are different. Is there anything... Give me something consistency. I need to be able to spot them because I'm a little bit afraid of them. What do all birds do? All birds definitely lay eggs. Lay eggs? Eggs? Eggs. 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 Just like... Like, like normal eggs? Just 
Just eggs, yeah. Eggs, eggs. Oh my gosh, I have some eggs. Let's go look at some eggs. Let's go. You have let's eggs? I have eggs. Let's go. Let's go. Well, I'm a, I'm a crazy Russian professor from University of Moscow. I don't know why I have eggs. So you just have eggs? Yes, I just have eggs yelling around. Are you just not trying to hatch birds? I thought you were terrified of birds. I am trying to hatch birds. As a matter of fact, here, take a look. I have the eggs and a look in the fridge. Oh, oh, those are pickled green beans and we have some, some cabbage. And, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Where'd you go? Yes. Um. Yes. Can you help me open, please? Oh, oh. Thank you. Okay. Oh, the, the, yes, eggs. Eggs. So I can count. How many birds will I get from these eggs? Well, none. What? But, 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 well, but I, ha uh, I have eggs. You do. You, you said that all birds have eggs. Well, yes, but these particular eggs, they're not fertile. That means the bird that laid these eggs never encountered a male. So there's nothing inside them. Can I show you? Wait, okay. What do you, but. Okay, don't crack that, because if you crack it open, then I'm going to be able to clean up a mess. Oh, no, 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 Professor. I'm not going to crack it open. In fact, I'm going to borrow your headlamp for a moment. I have an idea. <laughs> Light bulb. Well, you, you don't have uh, much of anything going on inside of it, unfortunately. Well, that's been known for years. Now, if you look inside this egg, you can see that you just kind of see the same color all the way through. If this were an actual fertile egg, you would be able to see the yolk inside as a little bit darker, and you would even start to see some veining coming out from the yolk that would indicate that the egg was fertile and that a chick was beginning to develop. So does that mean that all the eggs that I buy in the store will not grow into birds? It sure does. Okay, okay, so, so let me get this straight, let me get this straight. We've learned that birds have feathers, but those feathers can come in many, many different colors. And we've learned that um, their beaks can be specifically adapted so that they can eat whatever they're eating, whether it's nuts or fruit or, you know, bugs or whatever it is. But um, what about the eggs? And they grow eggs? They grow eggs too, yes? Yes, yes. Yes, eggs. they too. Now, what kind of bird l spit out those eggs? Did Professor, Professor, those eggs came from a chicken. A chicken? Like a chicken? Like a chicken. Like a chicken. Oh, this is a chicken. Wait, this is, oh my gosh. This is awkward. Those are some broken eggs. Professor Romanov made breakfast this morning, and he made it with eggs. And this chicken is looking at, did I kill that chicken's eggs? No, that was an infertile egg that you ate today. Oh, so nothing died when I ate it? No. Oh, it's fine. Okay. I'm sorry, buddy. We're just going to turn you over around here. That's a little bit awkward. You know, that's weird. Um, now, inside these eggs... If you were to hold them up to a light, you would actually see an almost fully formed chick. It looks like this one's about ready to hatch. So can you get it? Tap, tap, tap. Come on, chick. Come on out. Oh, yes, look. Does he make any sounds? Oh, he's so happy. Look, you can see his smiling face. I love eggs. Professor, do you, I mean, Ranger Renee, do you love eggs as well? I absolutely do. No, what? Especially ones with little birds inside. What kind of other types of adaptations do birds have besides their beaks? Oh, birds have all different types of adaptations. Specifically, I can think of off the top of my head, their feet. Their feet? What kind of feet? Now, what kind of bird has weird feet? Oh, there's a whole bunch of weird feet out there in the bird world. For example, that macaw that we looked at, when they're first born, all of their toes face the same direction. But as they grow and get older, the two toes on the outside swing around so that they kind of bend around and face the other direction so they can easily grab onto tree limbs. Now, Ranger Renee, when I'm out walking in my park, I often see birds singing songs and holding onto tree branches. How do they do that? Perhaps if we look at this tree that's conveniently here, oh, there's a bird! You could have never predicted that. There's a bird. Can you explain to me? Because I only see three feet here. How does that bird hold on? Well, not all birds have that zygodactyl foot like I was talking about with the macaw. Songbirds like you might see attached to your bird feeder or way up high in um, on wires or in trees, they're gonna have different feet that are just adapted to where they live. This songbird, for example, is going to be able to cling onto branches. So its feet are really just perfectly set up for that. What about birds that live near water? What do they can you show me one of those? Oh, they are fascinating. You know, Professor, we can go and look in our very fancy backyard pond. Oh my gosh, I love backyard ponds. They're amazing. You know, I heard of one student who is a daughter of one of the children or the uh, teachers that I work with, Ms. Villanon. I heard that they have a pond and that things grow out there and they found fish. Oh my gosh, the sun came out. Miss, I do not, where, but, but you said there was a pond. And there, there's, there's usually, usually some water birds here. Huh. I don't know. I but, guess they have to... Oh, wait! 
Here he is now. Oh, it's a duck. It's a ducky. Rubber ducky, you're the one. Thank you make goodness. bad times so much fun. Thank goodness this duck flew in just in time. Ducks like this one, swans, geese, and their other cousins have what's called webbed feet. Now their feet, if you were to look in between the toes, are actually attached on the very top. They have that webbing to make it a lot easier to swim through the water. If you've ever gone swimming and used things like fins on your feet, you've kind of experienced what having webbed feet might be like. So is that why the duck is swimming so fast and far away? So, so fast. Yes, that is a very, very fast duck. Now, let me ask you a question. Can ducks swim backwards? Hmm, that's an excellent question. Because it looks like from my hypothesis that that duck is swimming fastwards. And is that wolf going to eat that duck? That would be super scary. Probably not. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, you know, we have tons of birds living in this environment. What about, like, a weird environment, like a cold one? Like, we're in Florida. What about the cold bird? Oh, well, you know, we do actually have some cold birds that I've seen around here. Um... Yeah, we can go check out those birds. Should we travel to a faraway land? Let's go. Oh my gosh, I'm so ready. Now, we will sing a song. We will travel to an ancient land, singing songs on the way. I don't know why I sing like Pocahontas today. Da, 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 da. Shh. Professor, you must be very quiet to see animals. It's not my skill set. Did our canoe sink? Our canoe sank. <gasps> oh, we don't need a canoe to go to this one. We used a canoe to go to the Arctic, but this time we're going to the Antarctic. The Antarctic? What is the... Wait, 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 wait. Arctic, Antarctic. What is the difference? Okay, Professor. So the Arctic, you may be pretty familiar with because, you know, Santa Claus lives there. It's going to be the land of polar bears, walruses, and beluga whales. It's also on the very top of the planet. If I were holding the globe between my hands, my right hand up here, that would be the Arctic. The Antarctic is exactly the opposite. It's way down here in the Southern Hemisphere, the South Pole of the Earth. And the really big difference is that the Arctic is an ocean, the Antarctic is a continent. You're not gonna find any polar bears there. And in fact, literally translated, Arctic means bears and Antarctic is without bears. So if I see a polar bear at the South Pole, like I should probably lay down because I'm probably hallucinating? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, well show me a bird from the Antarctic. I want to see it. Brrr, it's so cold. <gasps> it's the cute little baby penguin. <gasps> I want to touch it. <gasps> well, this little tiny penguin here me, 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 me. is perfectly adapted to life where it lives. This little penguin has a thick layer of fat all the way around its body to help keep it warm. Even on its bottom? Even on its bottom. Oh my gosh. Now you can actually see some of those webbed feet, just like the duck that we saw outside. A penguin's feet are webbed too, because they spend most of their time in the water. But not this little penguin. This little penguin still has fluffy, downy feathers. These feathers aren't waterproof yet, so mom and dad are still probably taking care of him or her. Now what do penguins eat? They eat fish. Fish! Fish! fish. Are fish, they're another type of vertebrate, aren't they? They are. Okay, so if I were to look at the bird, and I were to look at the fish, how would I tell the difference? Well, one of the biggest differences would be that, you know, fish are generally covered in scales and birds have feathers. Oh, okay. Like the fluffy feathers all over. Whoop, this. Oh my gosh, that bird! Did you hurt that bird? No, you Is that bird gonna die? It's very wiggly. Oh my gosh, but what if that bird is injured? He's not injured. Look, he jumped right out of my hands. Oh my gosh. I Good thing so. I caught him too. Penguins actually can't fly even though they have wings. What are you gonna name, bird? I, I, he doesn't really have a name. I name him Kevin. I like that name. Okay. Well, okay. We have a lot of things named Kevin. <laughs> well, yes, Kevin's a good name. Okay. Well, this is cold penguin. Oh, so all penguins live in the cold? Well, you might think that based on TV shows and movies, but no, not all penguins live where it's cold. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I have seen the Rudolph Christmas special like 15 times. There are penguins and they only live in the cold. Well, um, there's a lot to address there. So... That would be in the North Pole, where penguins aren't found at all. In fact, all 18 species of penguins live in the Southern Hemisphere. They don't live in the North Pole. 18 species of penguins? I thought they species. were just like a bunch of birds wearing suits. Oh, no, sir. Penguins, like I said, there's 18 species of them, and only three of them are regularly found on the continent of Antarctica itself. Wait, wait, only three are found in cold weather? So where do the other ones live? A vast majority of them live where it's actually kind of warm and tropical. Can you show me a warm weather penguin? I think I can. 
Let me make sure I get this one back. Goodbye, Kevin. I love you. I love you, Kevin. You're such a good... I'm sorry that Ranger Renee dropped you. Hopefully you don't lose your wings. That would be embarrassing. You know, Kevin is the one who squirmed. You know, well, you know, Ranger Renee, maybe you should have been more prepared, okay? What's that, like scouts or boy scouts? Wait, you're a girl, so you wouldn't be a boy scout. Boy scouts must always be prepared. Are girl scouts always prepared? I don't know. We're talking about birds. What am I doing talking about boys? I've been locked out. Oh my goodness. So are we going to the cold, the warm weather? Professor, you must be very, very quiet when looking for animals. It's not my skill set. Let's go. Where are we going? Sneak up on it. Use your ninja skills. We're going to have to. Okay. This penguin is one of our warm weather species. He has a little bow tie. Yes, he's very adorable. Excellent. See, this penguin is a Magellanic penguin. He lives around the southern tip of South America, around Chile and Argentina. And he actually kind of looks a lot like an African penguin, which, as you can guess... Wait, 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 wait. African penguins? There are live... penguins in Africa? Yes. yes. They're not just named that because, like, random reasons? Oh, no, they live in Africa. But it's hot in Africa. It is. These penguins have different adaptations. See, around their eyes, they're actually missing a whole bunch of feathers. When they get really, really hot, that spot actually turns a little bit pink. Just like if you go running outside and it's really, really warm out, you'll notice that your cheeks get a little pink too. It's one of the ways that they ventilate heat. Penguins that live where it's really cold have all feathers all the way around their faces because they need to keep in as much heat as possible. I have learned so many things about birds. They do not seem to be scary at all. I learned that all birds lay eggs. That's how they are born. I learned that all birds have feathers. And of course, they're a vertebrate, so all birds have a spine. So let's review. Eggs, feathers, spine. Can you give me a wicked awesome high five for my students? Ah, rock on.